Well, thank you very, very much. Um, and um, can I just uh, echo what Kevin said? We really are so pleased, honoured, delighted that you should have chosen to hold this, uh, this important meeting here in the ever-expanding um, Menlo Park headquarters of, of Facebook. I, uh, having spent 20 years in European and British public life and constantly having to have worn, wear a suit, I'm delighted that I'm the most underdressed person <laughs> in this room. This shows my commitments to the sartorial standards of Facebook, my new employers. But, um, uh, look, I, and I really also obviously want to um, pay tribute to the exceptional work that you all collectively do under the, the chairmanship, co-chair, co-chairmanship of um, President Kagami and, and Carlos Slim for, for all you do to bring so many different um, parties, organisations, governments, researchers, academics uh, and private sector organisations together to um, deliberate on the challenge of increasing uh, broadband connectivity uh, around, the, uh, around the world. It is a tremendously important a challenge. It's one which brings great opportunities, but great pitfalls and risks uh, as well. And it's only a revolution, because that is what it is. It's only a revolution that can be navigated together, and that is really very much exemplified by this commission. So I really want to thank you for coming here, and thank you very much for all the work that you do and that you will continue uh, to do. Um, the other reflection um, I, I would just dwell on for a minute is the, the sheer scale of the challenge ahead of us. Um, uh, people often say that companies like Facebook, it is astonishing quite how uh, large they are. It is true that now around a third of the world's population, 2.7 billion people, use Facebook products every month. I mean, that is an almost unimaginable number of people. Uh, 2.7 billion is almost exactly the equivalent to the total size of the population of the whole planet in 1955. 2.7 billion people, if you line them up, they would... They would, they would go around the world, the globe, 28 times. So that scale is already immense, but the scale of what we still need to do is so uh, very great. Around 3.8 billion people still who are not uh, uh, connected uh, to the internet and can't uh, enjoy the, the freedoms and the opportunities that that brings. And that, of course, is a short-falling which uh, you know better than we do, is particularly acute in middle-income and low-income uh, countries. It uh, is a disadvantage which falls particularly heavily on some groups in society, women, particularly in developing countries, more than, uh, more than others. And that's why it makes it so important that we uh, cooperate together to try and bridge that uh, gap. Um, Facebook is, is, a, is well known as a social media company, but is very, very involved, in fact, much more involved than I think is widely appreciated in the uh, business of building the infrastructure uh, needed to uh, bridge that, uh, that gap. Um, with Air Airtel, we have, uh, as you may know, we have um, um, built fiber network in, uh, in Uganda with Telefonica. Uh, we've partnered in Peru uh, to open a, a radio access network. Uh, we have um, built, helped build a new submarine a fiber optic cable from Brazil to, to Argentina, and we're working with some mobile network operators, some of them, I think, represented in this room, for a major new initiative in Africa, which we hope will come uh, to fruition uh, shortly. And the third and final observation I want to make, which is obviously something uh, which um, rests heavily on the shoulders of companies like Facebook, is that with, with the freedom of the internet comes responsibility. And indeed, with the success that companies like Facebook have enjoyed, comes responsibility uh, too. And this is something which is uh, increasingly uh, appreciated here in Silicon Valley, uh, that whilst the internet brings great joy and brings out the very best of humanity, it also allows the very worst um, of humanity to, to come to the surface as well. And so our job is to maximize the good while minimizing the bad. We cannot do that on our own. We cannot do that on our own. We have to do that in partnership with regulators, with governments um, around the world. And that's why Mark Zuckerberg recently, as you may have seen, um, penned uh, an article uh, setting out the areas where he thinks there should be new, uh, new, a new partnership, either industry-wide standards or new regulation from governments, either individually or collectively, in areas such as harmful content, privacy, obviously, the rules governing elections uh, and the standards which are needed to allow people to enjoy data portability so that they can move their, their own data from one platform to the next. And uh, we are not just saying these things, we're, we're sort of quite literally putting our money where our mouth is. We now spend as a company as much on trying to keep people safe 
uh, um, uh, what we in the jargon here call integrity, whether it's uh, anti-extremism, anti-terrorism efforts, organized crime, crimes against vulnerable people, particularly children. We're spending as much as we uh, on that now uh, as the total revenues of the company uh, when the company was uh, floated uh, uh, publicly earlier in the, in the decade. Anyway, I, I hope that um, is a little flavor of some of the thinking that uh, prevails uh, in the discussions within Facebook. And we, of course, are uh, very keen to learn uh, from you uh, in these fora and other and continue to look forward to working with you in the future. So welcome and thank you. <laughs>